And welcome to Bianchi's North Side of Marana on Tangerine Road, just east of Thornydale. We're here for the 520 Sports Talk Show. Our special guests tonight are the FC04 Black Girls Soccer Team from one of the not the be, one of the best, the best soccer organizations in town. Looking forward to their answers. Looking forward to getting to know them, and also for them to uh, you to get to know them as well. Obviously, we want you to go out to their games. We want you to support uh, youth sports here in Southern Arizona. So we, let's get to our sponsors real quick. Sparkle Cleaners, 11 le- uh, convenient locations around Tucson, the metro area to serve you. Now offering home and business pickup and delivery of your laundry and dry cleaning. Go to sparklecleaners.com. I mean, how easy is that? You don't even have to lift a finger. They'll come and get your clothes, clean them, and deliver them back to you. Uh, Frog and Firkin, located in University Main Gate Square, voted the best pizza in Tucson by the Arizona Daily Star, the best outside dining, and the best family-owned restaurant. Sports on TV all day, all night, all week. Something's always happening at the Frog, whether it's our show, karaoke, trivia, live music, or, of course, U of A sports. So check out Frog and Firkin. Vibe Energy Bars, all natural and sweetened with agave, the better alternative and safe alternative to energy products, go to vibeinfusion.com. Wings over Broadway. When we have an east side show, we're over at Camino Seco and Broadway in the southeast corner. Best wings in Tucson. Stay crispy from the start to the finish. Great burgers, pizzas with sports all day and all night. Check out Wings Over Broadway. Bianchi's, like I said, we are here. Thank you to Vince Bianchi. This family started the Bianchi's over at Speedway and Silver Bell in the mid-70s. Uh, this is the newer location. Uh, both locations, great Italian food. Homestyle cooking, you can't beat it. Definitely check out Bianchi's Italian. Johnny Gibson's Downtown Market, we were there last week uh, for our show Under the Stars. Turned out to be really good. We had Western Little League on there, and it had a got lot of viewers, well over a 1,000 viewers. So thank you, Western Little League, for uh, representing Johnny's. The only down, downtown market stays open till midnight. Uh, in the patio, there's dining, there's karaoke, and on the side, in conjunction with Johnny's, we have High Wire Lounge to take care of all your adult bring, uh, beverages and their needs. So check them both out. Meech's Mexican Food at 39th Street and South 4th Avenue in South Tucson. Believe me, it's worth the trip. Go to Meech's. They have the best Mexican food in town, serving the area since 1976. Our newest sponsors we want to welcome is Arizona Lands- Native Landscaping, Design, Installation, and Maintenance, ArizonaLandscaping.com or go to their Facebook, Arizona Native Landscaping. If you mention 520 Sports Talk, you will get 10% off on your landscaping costs. So definitely check them out. Catalina Auto Recycling. Why buy new when used will do? For all your automotive parts and needs, go to CatalinaAutoRecycling.com. Arizona Lending Specialist. Call Mo the Mortgage Lady. Mo's a good friend of mine. She does the calligraphy for the Player of the Week certificates that we hand out when we uh, cover high school games. She's also the, one of the best mortgage people in town. She will undercut Nova, Sun Street, and all the big companies by a percent or a percent and a half. And we're talking about a $200,000 house. That's quite a bit of savings. So definitely check out Mo. You can get her at 520-510-6698. Jim Miller State Farm up at Continental Ranch. You'll notice the red VW right outside his office at Wade and Silverbell. Go bug him for a quote. He's got life insurance, auto insurance, homeowner's insurance, renter's insurance, and probably a couple insurances I don't even know about. But definitely check him out. He's your one-stop shop. You can uh, get him at MyMiranaAgent.com. Tuller Trophy, two convenient locations to serve you at 6th Street and 6th Avenue. And also the 5700 block of East 22nd Street, just east of Craycroft, Tucson Original Trophy and Award Center. Go to TullerTrophy.com. Chiba Hut, located at 1840 East 6th Street across from Arizona Stadium. The best toasted sandwiches around. And remember, nothing's fried except for the occasional customer. Go to Chiba Hut. First Heritage Realty, the A to B team with Brittany Palma. Looking for a house, condo, townhouse, or just land? Call her at 520-270-7958. Move the healthy way. So have Brittany sell you the house and have Mo the Mortgage Lady hook up your mortgage. It's a good team to have. Oasis Air Conditioning and Heating. Make sure your units are in tip-shop shape. We're kind of in that transition period right now where it's getting warmer. It's going to be in the 70s next week, but the week after is going to be in the 90s, so you definitely want your air conditioning to work properly. Call David Murrieta at 520-648-1755. 
New Stitch Embroidery at 3114 South 12th Avenue, just north of Pueblo High School. For all your silk screening, embroidery, and fabric laser printing needs, call 520-741-1070. They're the ones that do the 520 Sports Talk shirt, so we like them. They do a great job. Simply noted, mixing modern, modern marketing techniques with an old-school personal touch, expand your business footprint by go to, going to simplynotedllc.com. This is owned by ex-Wildcat football star Ricky Elmore, and he will definitely take care of you. Tucson Speedway, located on Houghton Road, just south of the fairgrounds. Fast and furious excitement that's fun for the whole family. Racing season has started, so don't miss out. For race times and dates, go to TucsonSpeedway.com. And finally, last but certainly not least, this is a 520 Sports Talk sponsor and also a 602 Sports Talk sponsor in our venture that's based up in Chandler. This is up in Cave Creek. It's 6710 Cave Creek. If you want to take your wife or your girlfriend to a place that they'll never forget, go to Cartwright's Modern Cuisine. It's such a good place. I've probably eaten there a dozen times, and every time something new comes out, they surprise me. They have guest chefs from around the country, from Chicago, from New York, from Italy, from France, come in and help Brett Viber, the executive chef at Cartwright's, and they will make you, like I said, a meal that you will never forget. So thank you very much, sponsors. And uh, with me, I have Jimmy Grimes. He's uh, with the organization of FC Tucson. And, Jimmy, uh, just kind of tell us a little bit about the organization and, uh, you know, what your goals are and, and how things are going. Yeah, hi. Thank you, uh, Bill. So um, FC Tucson, the, the, the youth club, actually just formed a year ago. And um, basically what happened was the, the two major clubs here in town um, agreed to, to merge. So with the merger came uh, FC Tucson, de- decided to go ahead and have a youth uh, organization, and they had an open tryout, and the girls that we'll see here in a little bit are, are the ones that formed the team. Um, it's a tremendous organization that, that, that I've, so far that I've seen, and um, the one thing that I really like about them is uh, they strive to empower these girls to not only get to the highest level in soccer or sports in general, but in life. That's great. Um, well, while we were setting up and I was going over some pre-show uh, instructions with the girls, uh, we told them about how we are on Facebook, and the reason we're on Facebook is because we reach the whole nation, and most people that live in southern Arizona are generally are not from here. So this allows your friends and family uh, back wherever you lived before to be able to watch you know, their grandkids, their nephews, their nieces, their cousins, that type of thing. The response I got was, Facebook's for old people. <laughs> so, yeah, that may be true, but, you know, I'm old, so that's how we do it. Um, also, check out our other social media outlets. Now, tomorrow, this show will be on 520 Sports Talk YouTube channel, which is more kind of geared towards the younger crowd. Also, check out our Instagram, 520 Sports Talk. Twitter, at 520 Sports Talk. Also, at 602 Sports Talk. And then, obviously, our Facebook page. 520 Sports Talk, just go up in the search bar and type in 520. It's not a radio station. We use that for the area code. So thank you, Jimmy. I appreciate it. We'll get the first group of girls up here, and uh, we'll let them build the house. Absolutely. Thank you, Bill. Uh-huh. I just wanted to add uh, this: this these girls, this group of girls, they are the elite team in uh, Tucson for their age group, and they're getting ready for the state cup. So. We only get the elite athletes here on 520 Sports Talk. There you go. <laughs> All right, <laughs> great. Have them. Thank you. All right, so while we're changing up, a quick program note. Uh, if you followed us last night, Arizona in the Final Four, women's basketball beat a stubborn TCU team 59-53. to It was a well-fought game. The refs did not call a lot of fouls. It was pretty physical out there. Uh, Arizona prevailed, and they will be playing for the WNIT National Championship game Saturday at noon at McHale Center. Coach Barnes wants us to tell all of our viewers here at 520 Sports Talk and 602 Sports Talk, please come out and support the Wildcats. They had uh, a little over 10,000 people. They want to pack the house. They want a crowd like the U of A men have, 14,000. Tickets are only $10. I mean, you can't beat that. And it's a great brand of basketball. We have the nation's third leading scorer who just got named to her second All-American uh, all American team list just today, Eric McDonald. And you're going to have a good time. 
and really be surprised by the talent of these young ladies on the Arizona Wildcat basketball team. So definitely check them out. Okay, girls, how you doing? You can share those mics, and I think that one will stretch all the way down there. Okay. So we're going to start with, we'll start with you. Bring the mic back up here. We'll start with you, and we'll go around. Okay, so when we get to you, you're the last one on the mic, and then you start with that mic, okay? Give me your name, where you go to school, and uh, what position you play. Um, so I'm Sophia English. I go, to, I go to South Point, and I play outside back. Okay, great. I'm Kylie Grimes. I go to Wilson K-8, and I play center mid. Your dad wouldn't have to be a fire captain, would he? My name is Sydney Smith. I'm a striker, and I go to Rincon Vista Middle School. Great. Uh, my name's Brinley Lorenko. Uh, I play outside back and outside mid, and I go to Sienega High School. All right. Well, my name is Isabella Narvaez. I go to Empire High School, and I'm a striker. My name is Sydney Heller. Um, I'm a center back, and I go to University High School. My name is Nigel Bruckner. Um, I'm a center midfielder, and I go to bases to center. My name is Jordan Singleton, and I go to Sienega High School, and I'm a center midfielder. All right, great. Thank you very much, ladies. We are. It's my honor to have you guys, the elite of the elite. And like I was telling uh, Jimmy Grimes, we only have elite athletes on the 520 show. We don't. We don't have those scrubs, you know. So. <laughs> so. Let's go around the table once again, and you guys can answer this question. How old were you when you got into soccer, and did you pick soccer as your first sport, or was it? did you play another sport before you decided to play soccer? Um, I think I got into soccer at about four, but I used to do swim year-round, and then I used to go to softball, and then that's when I started to play soccer, and that's when I got into it. Um, I got into soccer around five or six, I'm pretty sure, and I think it was like the first sport that I played. I got into soccer when I was five or six, and my dad just really liked the sport and he wanted me to play it. Great. Um, I got into soccer around like probably two and a half or three. My dad was very involved with soccer, and I used to dribble on the sidelines at his games, so soccer was my first sport. So you didn't have a chance to play another sport. You're just like, you're playing soccer. I did. On the side, I played basketball. Okay, but good. We're going to get into that in just a second, and I'll tell you why. Um, so my dad has always been into soccer his whole life. But, like, so I started soccer when I was, like, four. But he gave me, like, opportunities to try other sports. So I did, like, cheer and basketball and volleyball and stuff. But soccer is what stuck with me. So. All right. I got into soccer when I was three or four, very young, and my dad was like the coach of my rec team, so that's how it really started. But I also played other sports like softball and basketball, too. Um, I got into soccer when I was really young because both my parents played soccer, so I kind of grew up just always playing soccer. And um, it was my first sport, and we have played tennis a little bit, but mostly okay. it's my only sport. So. Okay. Um, I played soccer for about, or I started soccer when I was about six or seven, and definitely wasn't my first sport. I tried dance, baseball, uh, volleyball, cheer, and I just got into soccer. All right, great. So the reason I asked you that, there's always a method to my madness here, is I, like your dad, I worked at the fire department, okay? So, I mean, I know how the body works. I know what, what happens when it breaks and the ramifications of after it heals, you normally get arthritis. So, I've got doctor friends that are sports medicine doctors. I know orthopedic surgeons who actually fix broken bones and that type of thing. They're seeing a lot of injuries in kids your age because of the fact that kids play one sport year-round. We want to recommend, I don't say you have to get into another league or anything like that, but on your days off, go shoot baskets, uh, go play racquetball, like do tennis, do that lateral movement. Because believe me, basketball with the aerobics is going to help you in soccer. Racquetball, tennis with the lateral movement is going to help you in soccer. Uh, but you're using different muscle groups. If you if you went like this for three days, your, your finger would get pretty sore. 
probably after about five minutes, okay? That's what happens to your body when you use the same muscles over and over again. Now, if you've played other sports, you guys know when you haven't used a muscle group for a while, what happens? It gets sore. You know, like, wow, I haven't, you know, that tells you that you haven't used that muscle in a while because of the fact it is sore. So, even though you have love soccer and we're not trying to talk you out of playing soccer, make sure you exercise those other muscle groups because the last thing we want and your parents want and your coaches want is to have you get a major injury that could potentially cut your career short, okay? My goal is to get you out there, get you exposure, promote your team. Uh, I've got three scouting services that watch our show constantly. They scout for soccer, softball, and volleyball for girls, and then uh, football, baseball, basketball for guys. So they, are, they, they may be watching this show tonight. So my goal is to get you guys through high school, get you a college scholarship, take the burden off your parents financially, and get to... And you get to play the sport you love at a collegiate level. Isn't that cool? I mean, I played college sports, and believe me, I mean, high school was fun, but college was, it was the best. You know, I wasn't good enough to be pro or anything, but uh, but it's just, you know, we want you to continue that. So, let me ask you this. You guys all played more than one sport, except for maybe you. <laughs> so... Of the two sports or three sports, I have my three sports. I've been football, basketball, baseball, okay? Tell me what soccer offers that the other sport doesn't that attracted you to choosing soccer. (laughs) Well, so I played basketball, and I also played uh, softball. I quit softball a while ago, and I just enjoyed playing soccer more. And, yeah, that's kind of just what got me to choose it. I just enjoyed the game more than the other sports that I played. Okay. I I also run track, and I like soccer better because, like, you get better relationships out of track. Okay. Or out of soccer. <laughs> out of soccer. <laughs> yeah, you just get, like, better relationships out of soccer. And I feel like being physical is, like, more fun than running track. And, yeah. Oh, yeah, you can't knock somebody on the track yeah. off their lane or something. I hear you. Uh, well, I like to play a lot of sports, but something with soccer that's really stuck, it's the way it makes you feel when you play. I like to, I like to challenge myself a lot, and I feel like in soccer there's a lot of techniques and things that you can learn, and I like on my free time I like to go and try those out. So I don't know. There, it's just something about the way that we play the game and the coaches and everybody's inf- how they influence you. That's a good answer. Did you think of something? Yeah. Not okay. a girl. So when I used to play softball, I think that soccer attracted me more because what Sydney said, how it's more physical. Because in softball, it was like if you touch somebody, then it was like a bad thing. Like it was really bad. Well, and in basketball, you can't yeah. do it. It's a foul. Yeah. yeah. I just thought, I don't know, physical is just most, most. I think the only one, I think the only play in softball or baseball that she can really get away with is just knocking the crap out of the catcher sliding home or something. Yeah. <laughs> All right, good answer, girls. Oh, let's talk about state. You guys are are you guys are ready to go to state? It's the the playoffs are about to start. Is that the is that the case? Okay. Did you guys go were you guys on the team last year? I mean, did did, did you guys go to state before or is this a first time for most of you? Do you want me to go? So, basically, okay. um last year, I guess Probably like half of us were on TSA and the other half was on TVSC. Okay. So uh, we all made it to state, but we were on totally different teams, so we ended up playing against each other. So we weren't playing together as a team, I guess. Okay, So, but you got a taste of the playoffs, whether you were playing on different teams or what. So let me let me ask you this, because I, mean, I cover U of A women's basketball, and right now they're ready to play for the national championship tomorrow night, or Saturday night, excuse me. Uh, I encourage you guys to go and watch. The U of A soccer team was actually in the stands um, with Coach Amato, Coach Tony Amato. Um, there, Coach Sumlin was there. Coach Miller was there. Coach Court was there from the gymnastics team. I mean, there's just a, it's a real big family at the U of A. So if you guys get a chance to go, I know it's not your sport, but it's a good way to support U of A athletics. And you may run into Coach Amato or some of the soccer girls. 
and uh, you know you can say hi and whatnot. So, um, let me ask you this. Okay, so is it soccer? Is it a round robin, or is it one and done? You lose, you're out. Um, it's more of so there's like a group that you're put in. There's okay. brackets. And so for us, there's five teams in our bracket, including us. So we play four games. The top two teams advance to the semifinals okay. and play teams from the other bracket. Okay, so it's kind of a round-robin thing. Okay, but nevertheless, the pressure's still there. Because, as you know, in most brackets, you win, you stay in the winner's bracket. If you lose, you're in the loser's bracket. It's a lot tougher to get to that championship game going through the loser's bracket than it is to keep winning. So... Tell me what the what the most intriguing or what the, what really grips you you know grips you you know to playing like a pressure situation more pressure in the playoffs in the tournament than just a regular game. Um, well, honestly, I like playing in these type of games more because I feel like when you win, it's more of a reward. Like it makes you it's feel true, better. It's a good point. Yeah, it makes you feel better, and I don't know. That just makes me feel really good. Okay. Um, I think that. I play better when I'm under pressure, or like, and also I've been like told that. But like, I don't know. Sometimes, like the pressure, I don't know. Like, it gives you more adrenaline, kind of, because you're like, okay, I gotta get there. I have to do this, and like, sure. you kind of push yourself more to like do better for your team. All right, good answer. I like I like playing in like pressure situations because it's more competitive, and like. It's just, like, more fun when it's competitive, and, like, it's just, like, more fun. Well, and like she said, it, it, it gives you more of a sense of accomplishment. Yeah. If you played, you guys are eighth grade and, and, and freshmen in high school. If you played an all-senior team in high school and you beat them, as opposed to beating a sixth grade team, you obviously you're going to feel better because you, you beat older kids. That's the, that's the atmosphere, and that's the, the mindset when you're in a tournament, when you're in the playoffs for the for the you know the state championship or the cup title or something like that, that's what drives you. Is like you have to play your best. You can't bring your B game. You have to bring your A game. And if you don't bring your A game, what happens? You may go through that losers bracket. So, so all good answers, and I'm really glad you guys all came up with really good answers. So, let me ask you kind of a fun question. We'll go around the table. Obviously, you like soccer. And let's say, and I'm not going to just, I'm not going to just uh, isolate this to women's soccer. We'll talk about World Cup or and Olympics. So there's men's soccer, women's soccer in both the Olympic Games and in the World Cup. Okay. So tell me, two part question. Who's your favorite team in the World Cup and the Olympics? I would assume it would be the same one because they're countries. And if you were to play an Olympic game and win a gold medal. Or have a chance at being a champion in the World Cup, which would you rather want? A gold medal. Oh, wait, I can go, okay. So, my family's from Colombia. So, like, ever since I was born, we, like, supported Colombia. And I don't know, I really like the team, especially my boy, James Rodriguez. There you go. <laughs> and I think I'd rather win the World Cup because. Okay. Like, we never watched the Olympics. It's all about the World well, no, Cup. No, Colombia is very, very competitive. All of South America yeah. is very competitive. But Personally, I'm an Argentina fan, and I like the Argentina colors you got here. <laughs> so I'm also Portuguese. Okay. So a lot of my family came from Portugal, so I really like the USA and um, the Portugal team. But... I look at, I watch a lot of them because I like looking at different players and who plays sure. my position to see what they do different and see what I can improve on. So like a player on the Brazilian national team is Marcelo. He plays outside back right. and he's very attacking and I think that's more of what I want to be. I want to be able to get involved into that. So I don't know, I like to jump around, but Portugal is probably my favorite team. So All right. I would rather win a World Cup. I think that's just, I think it's more. I think it's more prestigious? Yeah. It's 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 almost the same because the Olympics are every four years and the World Cups every four years. So it's just you're competing against everyone in soccer. I mean, you have to play, you have to play with that pressure to get there. Right. Um, the Olympics, you have to qualify. So yeah. not every country can make the Olympics. So it's actually well, the World Cup, you have to qualify too. So 
you may not play Antarctica because they don't have a good soccer team you know, or something like that, but you're going to play the Portugals, the Spains, the Germanys, the Brazilians, the Colombians, the Argentinians, and stuff like that. Okay. Sydney? Um, Go ahead. So um, my dad's side of the family is German, so okay. I'm a Germany fan. Um, that's more for the men's, and then on the women's side, I'm pretty much a big USA fan. Okay. So, um, I mean, but I cheer for both teams. It's just for those respective genders, that's who I cheer for. Um, and I'd rather win the World Cup just because in the Olympics, there's all sorts of sports going on, too. Right. So it's not just soccer. That's a good Whereas, point. I've never, actually, nobody's ever brought that point up, and I've probably asked this question a half a dozen times to different soccer teams that we've had on. That's, that's a great point. Yeah, and in the Olympics, people, it just seems more of a overall, how is your country doing in multiple sports? But in the World Cup, it's all focused on soccer. All focused on soccer. That's an excellent answer. Um, so, I would, I personally, like all around, am a USA fan. I don't, I guess, have a reason, but it's just like I'm here. Because <laughs> so, you're American? Yeah, like that's why, and I'm just, yeah, that's who I go for. And I would personally um, want to win the World Cup. Just, yeah, what she kind of said, it's focused just on soccer, and I just feel like it's more of like an accomplishment. I don't know why. But. Very good, very good. I'm in the same boat. I'm definitely a USA fan, and um, especially the women's team. Especially with the FIFA Women's World Cup coming up. I'm super excited to watch that. And uh, I think, like, overall, like everybody else, I would definitely rather win the World Cup just because it's all around soccer. All right. Do we forget anybody? No? Well, there you have it. Um, both very prestigious. I mean, to have a gold medal around your neck would be very, very nice. But to be able to hoist that World Cup with you and your teammates. And that was such a good answer. It's like the World Cup is the World Cup. It's only soccer. There's there's not track and field. There's not boxing. There's not basketball. Um, there's not, you know, the other, uh, you know, summer sports that are going on. It's it, the whole world's focus is on soccer. And soccer is is definitely a world sport. I mean, the, U of, the USA is probably, they're catching up fast, but can be comparing, not so much on the women's side because the women always, it's either the women, uh, you know, or Canadians or something that take, um, <coughs> excuse me, the gold medal. On the men's side, usually the Europeans or the South Americans, you know, win the World Cup. All right. How are we doing on time, Mr. Producer? Okay, so let's talk about grades a little bit, okay? You can be the next greatest soccer player in the world and... If you can't make grades, colleges aren't going to look at you, okay? you got to figure that a college scholarship is worth about eighty dollars to $100,000 worth of education that they're giving away. They're not going to take a chance on a fringe player that's getting C's and maybe a D here and stuff like that. You've got to make the grades in order to play to soccer. So <clears throat> even though you guys are are beginning your high school careers and some of, them are, some of you are finishing up your middle school careers, Let's kind of fast forward a little bit and tell me, do you want to play soccer at the next level, meaning college, whether it's junior college at Pima, which has a great soccer team. I mean, their men's just won the national championship. Uh, U of A soccer, they went to the playoffs. Um, they lost to a tough Tennessee team, but they had a really, really good season. Um, do you want to play college soccer at whatever level? And what would be your dream school to go to, not only athletically, but academically? Um, so I definitely would want to play college and soccer. And right now, I don't know what my dream college would be because I'm, like, younger, so I wouldn't know. And you got plenty of time to change your mind. Yeah. So I definitely would want to uh, play college soccer. And as of now, my dream college is, like, the U of A. I just really like their campus, and okay. I like being here. I do want to play college soccer, and my dream college would be UCLA because I love the campus and I love California. And I feel like grades, you like you could be really good, and there could be someone a little like less talented than you, and you might not have the best grades, and they could have better grades than you, and they'll choose the better grade player with a little less talent over you because your grades are not 
up to like. You know, that's a great point because sometimes talent doesn't win over. And like I said, if you're, you could be the next female Messi. And if you can't pass your classes, it doesn't matter how good you are because you're going to be sitting on the bench. You're not going to be eligible. Okay? Getting good grades is not to stay eligible. Getting good grades in middle school is to prepare you for high school. Getting good grades in high school is to prepare you for college. Getting good grades in college is to prepare you for life. Okay? One of these days, you're going to have to hang up the cleats. I mean, you're just going to be too old to play soccer. All right? That's when you're... That's when your your degrees, your college degrees, whether it's a bachelor degree, master, doctorate, that's when they come into play, and that's what you're going to make your mark in life on. I was a three sport athlete, all stayed in two sports, but yet I made my I made my mark in life working for the fire department, okay, helping people, and so that's why you want to get good grades is to prepare you for life because you're always going to have the memories of like. Hey, remember back when we were on that goofy guy show, 520 Sports Talk, and you're talking to your grandkids or something like that? So the memories are always going to be there. And believe me, the legends grow bigger and bigger as time goes by. But the fact is that's only a small part of your life, and how you're going to make your mark in life is is because you're getting good grades and because you get, decide to go into the field of work or study whatever you choose to be. Everybody kind of agree with that? Okay, so... One more school question, and then we'll go to a funny one, okay? Tell me your best subject, and tell me, I don't want to say worse, because I don't go that way. Tell me the subject that you may need a little bit of work on. Um, so I think my best subject is English, and I don't know, I think I just love the, like, I love expressing how, like, through writing, and I love, like, poetry and stuff like that. And I have to say, the one that I need to work on is maybe math. Okay. Because, I don't know, sometimes it, like, really works for me, and then sometimes it just doesn't work. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> so in school, my best subject is definitely math. I don't know why. It's just I find it the easiest and I can understand it. And my worst, or what I need to improve on the most, uh, probably English. I don't know why. I just can't, uh, I don't know. Like, I'm just not as, like, efficient on remembering stuff right. about it. Okay, so I'm the, I'm the solution guy here, okay? So you guys just need to study together, that's all. <laughs> the subject I like the most, I like love math. I'm like really good at it. I'm just like naturally good at math. The subject I need to, I need to work on is science because like sometimes I just don't get it. And like I just struggle with it sometimes. Sure. Yeah. Alright. So the subject that I'm probably better in is math. Right now I'm taking algebra two. And it's a lot more challenging than it was, but it's still probably one of my best subjects. A uh, subject that I struggle on is probably English. But math and English are pretty different. Sure. Because in math, there's like one right answer, and in English, it's however you analyze it. So I think that I just need to work on that more. Good answer. Let me just interject here for a second. You're talking about algebra. I had somebody on Facebook ask me, he's like, well, you don't even use algebra when you're an adult. I'm like, you don't. Well, yeah, no, you don't. I said, have you ever balanced a checkbook? I'm not talking about taking your balance and subtracting, you know, $800 for your mortgage or something like that, and you come up with such and such. It's when the checks haven't cleared that you still have to have run a balance so you don't overdraw. That unknown factor is called what? X, right, in algebra. So, yes, you do use algebra in your adult life because you have to be able to balance your checkbook when certain checks haven't cleared. So just a, just a point of thought. I'm definitely a big math and history person. Um, Love history. <laughs> I find it just, like, fun to learn it, I guess. And I think my worst subject is probably science. Okay. I don't know why. I just, I don't like it very much. Okay. No, no, when you're saying science, are you talking, like, biology, which is the study of life? Or are you talking about chemistry, which is the study of elements? Uh, mostly both. <laughs> mostly both. Okay. All right. Good answer. <laughs> um, I'm a big math person, so I'm in pre-calc this year. Um, and then I also like physics a lot. Um, it just makes sense to me. My worst subject is probably English, 
because like Finley was saying, I don't like the subjectivity of it. I feel like it's too open-ended and there's not just one right answer that you can okay, get Okay, that's a good point. And so that's where I can't do that. Now, English is a very difficult language, and, and those of us who speak Spanish or, or Portuguese or something like that, a Latin-based language, English is very hard, Chinese is very hard, Russian is very hard, because of the fact there's, there's so many variables, and there's so many, it goes against the rule and stuff. Um, or Spanish and Portuguese... It's very, you know, it's more simplified. It's this way most of the time. There's not a lot of exceptions to the rules. Like, in Spanish and Portuguese, there's no apostrophe S. You don't say Bill's house, you say house of Bill. So, you know, it, it, in that respect, it, it makes it a little simpler. So, if you are good in English, consider yourself smart because of the fact it is a hard language. Yeah, so um, my favorite subject throughout all of my school years has usually been history but this year my favorite subject is probably environmental science because it intrigues me what's happening to this planet and what we need to do to fix it all right great um my best spanish would like obviously be spanish wait did i say my best spanish oh well <laughs> But like, hey, it's an easy A, right? <laughs> yeah. But my like, throughout like all of school since like I was little, I've been really good at math because I think it just makes sense. But the subject that I'm struggling on this year would be AP World History because I'm like Sid, I don't really like history. <laughs> but um, yeah. Let me let me interject here for a second. Do you know the reason that they teach history? One, you want to know what happened before you were born. Two is, and this is the, I think this goes unnoticed by a lot of uh, kids your age, but also adults my age, is you have to look at history throughout the ages and look at the mistakes that that culture made so you don't repeat the mistakes. Okay, that's the biggest reason to do history is you don't want to repeat the mistakes that your ancestors or your forefathers made, and that's, that's a good reason. Um, I personally like history. But I know some people don't. It's not really a right, right, wrong thing. It's just a matter of, you know, what. It's a personal preference. Okay, funny question time. Now you guys are a traveling school, right? Kind of like the circus. Right. <laughs> All right. So, obviously, traveling team means travel. A lot of bus trips. A lot of carpooling. Uh, what's one thing you can't do without when you travel? Gasoline, right? Okay. Which means you got to stop at the gas station, right? So I want to know from you girls, what's your favorite gas station food and drink? Oh, yeah. Probably for the drink, just regular Gatorade. I don't know. It's just, I just like Gatorade. And then probably a snack. It's just any kind of chips. I don't know. Okay. Um. For the snack, definitely just any kind of chip. I don't really have a specific. So you just kind of close your eyes and grab a chip? I mean, whatever, yeah, whatever I get. And the drink would definitely be, like, iced tea, because I just really like tea. Okay, all right. I like, Superstar. I love, like, QT food. Like, QT is the bomb, so, like, <laughs> like we always go there before trips, and I just, like, usually grab chips. And my favorite drink is... Cool blue Gatorade, because the, the ice the, blue. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I knew I liked you. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite gas station is also QT. It's just I think that you know they got some good deals too. Uh, <laughs> when I, I you're you're gonna go into economics, right? <laughs> <laughs> um. Usually it just depends on what time you're going there, because you know you gotta know what mood you're in for what snack. Sure. I like I like their slushies a lot though. Okay, and they have a multiple yes. uh, selection of those. The blue ones. <laughs> no, I don't I don't know about snacks. You know I just like to eat. <laughs> well, um, let me let me ask you this. Give her the mic again. Snacks. Do you want something salty like chips, or do you want something sweet like a donut or something like that? I don't I don't really like donuts actually. It's just I don't know. It's like candy bar. Like, yeah, I like I like that. But okay. like it just it's you know, it's just the mood. Like if like I went through like something like 
Like, after practice, you know, I really shouldn't have it, but, like, so I want something sweet. Okay, so let me ask you this. What's your go-to candy bar? Uh, I like caramel a lot. So there I you like, go. I like, like, Rolos and, like, Milky Way. Okay. All right, good answer. Um, so when I used to live in Florida, the 7-Eleven there had, like, these things called pan de bonos. They're, like, these Colombian things. But they don't have it here, so my like favorite snack, sorry, would probably be like Takis. Or, like, okay, Takis stuff. are good. <laughs> and my favorite drink that I always get is like Herbert's lemonade. Okay, so, all right. My favorite drink would probably just be yellow Gatorade, <laughs> just simple. And my favorite snack, any type of chip or cracker. I'm all not right. <laughs> Um, I like Gatorade too, so I'm a big yellow Gatorade fan. Um, uh, and I, I really, for some reason, I really like the ice cream at QT. So you, I don't think there's anything at QT that's bad. <laughs> so that's what I've had a couple. Even times. the adult beverages. <laughs> um, I'm also a really big Gatorade per- person. I'll just get whatever Gatorade I feel like, and. I really like banana bread for some reason. <laughs> hey, I got one the other night, didn't I, Mr. Producer? <laughs> um, I definitely like sweet stuff. Okay. All right. Good deal. Good deal. All right. So this is the time uh, of the show where we're going to switch up groups. But before you guys go, I want to tell you how what a, what a great experience for me is to hear your answers and to really, really get to know you guys, not only on an athletic level but on a personal level. And we're going to let you shout out to anybody, whether they're here in Bianchi's or they're anywhere in the United States or even the world. Uh, I had a rugby show on, and somebody from Costa Rica was watching. Um, I had the Empire Girls basketball team on, and one of the girls' dad was in the military, and he got to watch his daughter from Guam. So because that's the reason I use Facebook, because not everybody's in Tucson that knows you guys. So chances are some of you aren't weren't born here, like I wasn't born here. So here's your chance to shout out to anybody you want. Uh, Alex Hernandez and Chelsea Buckland. I think they've really helped, like, get me started in soccer, too. All right. Shout out to my mom and dad. There you go. There you go. Mom and dad, this is for you. Mom and dad rule. Uh, definitely mom and dad and my friends Gracelyn and Tyree Wagner. All right. Shout out to mom and dad. Follow me on Instagram at a at a h h h dot l i l dot s y d d. You know, I'm gonna charge you to be a sponsor for us. You know. Not even to your mom and dad. Oh yeah, yeah. Shout out to my mom and dad. All right. Shout out to my mom and dad. <laughs> All right, us Hispanic kids over here and stuff, you know. Where's Nana and Tata? Because you know that if you don't shout out to the grandparents, at least for Mexican kids like me, man, that chocolate comes going down the hallway and hits you right in the head. And believe me, Nana has a better arm than most NFL quarterbacks. Okay? All right, I want to thank you girls for stopping by. Good thank luck you. on uh, on your going for the championship. 520 Sports Talk's all behind you. Uh, send me a text. I know that I'm... I know that Facebook's for old people, but you, you can send me a text. I've got some business cards I'll hand out. Uh, let me know the scores. Have your coaches send me pictures. We'll put it up on the Facebook page. Now you guys want Facebook accounts, don't you? Because you want to be able to see yourself. So, so we want to thank you very, very much for uh, coming in. And uh, congratulations on your success that you've had so far. And keep us uh, striving to be number one. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to change it up here real quick. And uh, just remember, uh, Saturday is one of the most important uh, games probably in the history of not only the university, but especially women's sports for the national championship WNIT game at McHale Center. It's going to be high at 12 o'clock. It's going to be Wildcats versus Wildcats. The University of Arizona is going to take on Northwestern University from Evanston, Illinois in the Chicago area. The Northwestern Wildcats, the U of A Wildcats for all the marbles in the WNIT. Tickets start at $10.
and let's pack McHale out. We want 14,500 people at McHale. We had a little over 10,000 people uh, in the game last night, and believe me, it was loud at McHale. I've never seen it that loud for a women's game, and it was a very entertaining game and obviously a very well-played game by both teams, but the U of A ended up prevailing, and therefore they're in the national championship game on Saturday. How you doing, girls? Okay, so you guys share this mic, and you guys share that mic, okay? So we're going to start with you, hon. Give me your name, where you go to school, and what position you play. My name is Ilana Melton. I go to Cienega, and I play the nine, the forward. My name is Kylie Oliver. I go to South Point, and I play forward. Thank you. I'm Gabby. Um, I go to South Point, and I'm a defender. Okay. I'm Alicia. I go to Emily Gray, and I'm a forward. Okay. I'm Ashley Tapia. I go to Saguaro High School, and I play midfield. You go to what high school? I'm sorry. Saguaro High School. Saguaro High School, okay. I'm Ian Bella. I go to Saguaro High School, and I play keeper and forward. All right. My name's Jamie Black. I go to CDL, and I play center back and forward. I'm going to have the CDL boys volleyball team on right here at Bianchi's next week. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Saguaro kids, R.J. Lundstrom, your assistant principal, I went to school with them. <laughs> yeah, we're old. <laughs> Sienega kids, Pat Nugent, my buddy, the football coach. Good deal. Yeah. South Point, you guys are good in every sport. <laughs> Okay, well, I want to welcome you to the show. As I was telling the first group of girls, it's my honor to have you on the show. I had my day in the sun playing athletics. This is all about you guys tonight. Uh, I want to congratulate you on the success that you've had this year so far. And uh, the, the, the season's not done. The story's not told yet. You want to go for the cup, right? You want to get the championship because you guys are champions. And from what I'm told, this is the cream of the crop in Tucson girls soccer. Am I correct? Yes. Am I correct? Yeah. There we go. All right. So let me ask you this, and I asked the other girls this. You have women's soccer in the Olympics every four years. You play for your country. You have the Women's World Cup every four years. You play for your country. If you had the choice to win a gold medal in the Olympics or be part of a World Cup championship squad, which would you rather be? That's why they pay me the big money. <laughs> Gold medal or World Cup? Um, I think I'd say World Cup just because it's so monumental for women's sports. It's a big deal. Okay. Is everybody else thinking, or? <laughs> um, I'd say I go for the gold medal because it's more of like a, it's just more of a worldwide celebrated thing. Like everybody watches it, and I think that'd okay. be really cool to get recognized for that. Okay, that's a good point, and I'm going to bring up the alternate point that the first girl brought up as soon as you guys finish. I think I would do a gold medal because it's like an individual accomplishment, and you would just be proud of yourself. Okay. Um, I think I'd also do the gold medal because it's more also like an individual achievement that you've made in your life and yeah okay um, just like Kylie and Gabby said I'd probably say gold medal because like it's something you just yourself worked for and like you know you accomplished it on your own you know okay. and there's no wrong answer I just wanted to get your feel all the other girls to a girl said World Cup and this is why. They said because when the World Cup happens, it's only the World Cup. When the Olympics happens, there's track and field, there's boxing, there's basketball, there's all kinds of other sports going on in within the Olympic Games. So both are very prestigious. Personally, I'd like to have a gold medal hanging around my neck, you know. But to be part of a World Cup would also be very, very special. I mean, not everybody can say, hey, I was on a World Cup team. 
Okay, so they both are unique, and they both have their advantages and, and disadvantages. And I think it's just a personal preference. But I like asking that question because, like I said, most of you said gold medal, where most of the first girls group of girls said World Cup. So very interesting. So let's kind of keep it on the soccer theme. Uh, and I'm not going to limit it to women's soccer. You can do men's soccer, too. Who is your favorite soccer player to watch and to kind of emulate and, you know, and form your game after them, him or her, uh, in the world? Mine would be Mallory Pugh because she okay. she's really attacking. And Very. she just, I mean, she's 16. She really, you know, well, 18, but she kind of has, like, no fears, and that's just, like, crazy. I think. She's an amazing player. Who's next? Um, I think I'd also choose Mallory Pugh just because she's very young and like she's representing her country as in like a really good sport and yeah, she's a really good role model. That's a good point. You know, as young as she is, she's still a role model. I I love Alex Morgan because I love how she's on the U.S. Women's Soccer Team and that she like represents equality for soccer. All right. Um, I'd say Julie Johnston because she's like really I just think she's a really good player all around like not only is she good at defending but she also can like she's just very versatile she can play a lot of different positions and she's really good at that all right I think Tobin Heath because she's super technical on the ball and she distributes it really well okay. that's a long cord you can pull it towards me I got 15 feet of cord. Unless somebody's stepping on it. Is everybody answer? I have to go with Tobin Heath, too, just because she's accomplished, like, a lot for her age as well. Sure. So, I don't know. She's just, like, someone that you can aspire to be, you know? No, those are all good answers. All good answers. Okay, so let me ask you this. Two-part question. Do you want to play co- – now, you guys are – you have one middle schooler, but the rest of you are in high school – I'm talking college. Do you want to play soccer at the next level, whether it's for Pima or for the U of A or for, you know, some UCLA or some other college? Do you want to play soccer at in the next level, and what would be your dream soccer school and academic school? Um, so I've kind of been thinking about going to NAU, and I think, like, that would be really good for academics, but the soccer team I know is really good there. And I just think NAU would be a really good fit for me. Beautiful campus up there in Flagstaff. Mm-hmm. Don't everybody jump at once. We do have a time limit here. I definitely want to play college soccer. I think that uh, the competitive team we're on now, it's totally the way to go. And, like, I don't think we'd really all be out here if we didn't all want to play. And I'd want to go to UCLA just because... I don't know. It's far, but it's not too far. They have a great soccer team. It's just a good option. And being a Californian, I mean, even though I'm an alum of the U of A, I mean, you can't go wrong at a, at a, at a, at a California college, yeah. especially academic-wise. I would love to play college soccer. I don't know what college I would go to, but okay. I like anywhere in California. I, okay. I love California. And I just, like, love, I love, like, like, I have a bunch of seniors, friends who are going to college, and I just love talking to them and seeing where they're going and just getting their perspective of where to go. Okay. That's good. Always, you know, they can give you some insight that maybe, you know, you may not have seen, have heard. Um, I'd like to play in college, but I'm not quite sure what college I'd want to go to. Okay, nothing wrong with that. you got plenty of time. Um, I do want to play college soccer, and I'd either want to go to NAU or UCLA, just because they both have really good academic programs. Don't forget um, our friend Tony Amato at the U of A now. Um, I want to play high school, or not high school, college <laughs> soccer, but I'd have to go to certain places because, like, for the profession I want to go into. Sure. So I want to go to NAU because it has the profession and um, a fairly good soccer team. That's good. And and the reason I'm asking you this is because your parents, me, your coaches, we want soccer to pay for your college. One, it's going to take a burden off your parents having to pay for your college, especially when you go out of state, UCLA, that type of thing. So the best way to get a scholarship for athletics 
is what? Is getting good grades, right? Because yeah. you can be the best soccer player in the world, and if you're making C's and D's and stuff, the colleges aren't going to waste an eighty to $100,000 scholarship on you thinking, oh, man, I hope she stays eligible. And the reason I'm saying that is because staying, getting good grades, the, the point of getting good grades is not to stay eligible. The point of getting good grades for you at Emily Gray is to prepare you for high school. For you guys in high school, to prepare you for college. College will prepare you for life, okay? At one point, sometime down the line, you're going to have to king up your cleats. You're just going to be too old to play soccer. And what you learned in school and the degree that you got is going to forge your mark on the world on what you want to do. You're always going to have your kids and your grandkids. You're going to tell them what a great soccer player you were and how cool Bill was on the 520 Sports Talk Show. <laughs> but what you do as an adult is predicated on what decide what you know what degree whether it's bachelor's master's doctor you get to whatever you want to be a teacher if you want to be an engineer if you want to be a nurse or a doctor or a cop or a fireman that type of thing that's going to all depend on on what you decide and it all goes back to one thing good grades correct okay well, so i'll put the soapbox away now all right so how are we doing on time mr producer I think we might, uh, okay, so let's go to the funny questions, okay? Enough of the serious stuff, right? All right. So the first group of girls, I won't ask you the same question, but I'll just kind of give you a hint. The first group of girls, because you're a traveling team, and traveling means you go places, and you can't go anywhere without what, gas? Yeah. I asked them what their favorite gas station food and drink was. Oh. And the answers were great. I think QT was the most popular gas yeah. station. And I, and I agree, I have one just a mile from my house. So let me ask you this, though, because everybody doesn't always eat at the gas station, but I know you guys eat fast food. Give me your two favorite fast food places, and you got to give up one for the rest of your life. I would say Chick-fil-A or In-N-Out. Okay, and which one are you going to give up? In-N-Out. Oh, we can't be friends. <laughs> All right, next. I would say uh, Panda Express and Chick-fil-A. Okay. And I'd probably give up Chick-fil-A. Wow, I didn't see that coming. Okay. <laughs> I would say In-N-Out and Chick-fil-A. I would probably give out In-N-Out because it's, like, really bad for you. And you just feel so much better when you eat, like, a Chick-fil-A salad, I feel like. I'm taking your California card away from you. <laughs> um, minor Chick-fil-A and EG's, and I'd okay. probably give up EG's. Uh, I think that's a good decision. EG's got great drinks. Their sandwiches are kind of eh. Mine would probably Subway and Panda, and I'd give up Subway because I think Panda is really good. <laughs> okay, so let me give you a hint. You don't have to give up Subway for Panda Express. I want you guys to try out Chiba Hut. It's right across the street from the beach volleyball pits at the U of A at Sticks and Campbell. They're one of our sponsors. They make Subway look like dog food. All right? They've got rec Now, you guys may not appreciate this, but your parents parents my age, they have retro drinks. And the, 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 what I mean by that is they have three kinds of Kool-Aid. We grew up on Kool-Aid. We grew up on Tang. They have Tang. Tang is what the astronauts used to drink on the way to the moon. All right? They still have Pepsi and stuff like that. But they have Rice Krispie treats. They have Captain Crunch treats. They've got, uh, they've just got all this crazy food that you don't see at, at some of the other sandwich shops. And their sandwiches are toasted and they're the best. So definitely check out Chiba Hut. I would say my two favorite restaurants are EG's and Subway, okay. but I probably give up Subway because they don't have the EG's drink, <laughs> and they're both subs. So you can't beat EG's. I mean, as far as the drinks. So pick McDonald's at Burger King. <laughs> We'll go with um, EG's and Panda, and I okay. would give up Panda. Okay, all right. Have you guys ever even eaten Payway? You'll never eat Panda again. Eat Payway. I like Panda. 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 I like
<laughs> All right. And there's no wrong answers. I just like to get the feel of it. Um, you guys are a lot of fun. Let's ask you another funny one. Do you, if I ask you to think outside the box, do you know what that means? Yes. It means don't think of the obvious answer, okay? All right. You're on a deserted island. Okay. How you got there doesn't matter. You're on a deserted island. You can bring three things with you. A person is a thing if you choose that. What three things would you bring? Think outside, think outside the box. Wait, are, are you stranded on this island like from birth? No, you're just on it like since last week. Oh, okay. From birth. Not from birth. <laughs> Yeah, it's like this is the only thing I know. I'm good here. I would say a house, okay. food, okay. and electronics. Okay. I had one girl say a cell phone. I'm like, and there's a lot of cell towers on a deserted yeah. island. All right, who's next? I would bring my sister just for company. Okay. And, um, like a house and a grocery store. <laughs> okay. All right. I don't think I've ever had that answer. Good answer. Um, I'd bring a house, a dog, and a Chick-fil-A. <laughs> okay. House, dog, and a Chick-fil-A. <laughs> um, you guys still aren't thinking outside the box enough. What is outside the box? Yeah, it was I'd bring a friend for company. Okay. I'd have food, and sure. I'd have Lightning McQueen. you have what? Lightning McQueen. Okay. Who, who is? <laughs> um, I'm it's, old. It's like a car show. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh, okay. Like All right. Cars. I understand. Yeah, the movie okay. Cars. I'd bring a plane to get off the island. Oh. There we go. There we go. That's something in outside the box. She will bring a plane. You guys all seem content to stay on the deserted island. She wants, she, she wants to get herself off the deserted island. Good answer. Good answer. All right. I'd probably bring my friend, my best friend. Um, probably some clothes. I mean, yeah, okay. Well, like a change of clothes. Um, this is a family show, right? Maybe like a... I don't know. Maybe a canoe. Okay, all right, you're getting there. Workout, all right, fine. so it's a matter of do you want to stay on the island, house, electricity, or plane, boat, gas to get off the island, or do you want to get, do you want to get off the island? So that that's that was the kind of think outside the box thing I was thinking about. So, okay, so it's been my pleasure to have you guys on the show. Before we wrap it up, I'm going to give you a chance to shout out the reason that we do this on Facebook is not because we're old. It's because Facebook hits the whole nation or the whole world. I'll give you two prime examples. I had a women's rugby team on my show, and somebody from Costa Rica watched the show. I had the Empire High School girls basketball team on the show, and you that go to Sienega know that Vail is a lot of military families. So their dad was stationed in Guam, and he got to watch his daughter on the show. That's why we do it on Facebook. So for those of you who don't have Facebook, um, my social media guy, Pearson Sturdivan, he's a freshman golfer at Sabino. He will put this on YouTube, on the 520 Sports Talk YouTube channel, so you guys can watch it, okay? Uh, those of you out there, please give us a like or a follow. It helps me get uh, advertisers. Once again, we want to thank Arizona Native Landscaping for joining the 520 Sports Talk sponsor family, for Chip. All the guys over there at Arizona Native Landscaping, Jenny, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate your sponsorship. Uh, if you guys didn't know, the people at Platt, that the landscaping company that we just brought on, Arizona Landscaping, their son played volleyball at Ironwood Ridge and had something like a 39-inch vertical leap. I mean, I, I live-streamed this, this, this team, and it wasn't just him. All the guys were good on the team. He could jump over the blockers, so he didn't have any obstructed view of people's arms up. He jumped over them, and he had a whole view of the court, and he was unstoppable. I mean, he's just an incredible athlete. So uh, we like doing high school sports, uh, middle school sports. I'm going to have Old Vail Middle School on our show again. I told them if they won the wrestling championship, they could come back on the show. 
their coach just uh, texted me last week. They won, so they'll be back on the show out east at Wings over Broadway. So, so let's give yourself, uh, let's give whoever you want a shout out, whether they're in the building here, uh, they're in another city or state. Everybody can see us, so here's your chance to shout out to your friends and family. I'd like to shout out Matthew. He's stationed in Korea, and my mom. I like to shout out Sue and Tony, our coaches. All right. I like to shout out my coaches, parents, and sister, and also Layla. Thanks for watching. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'd like to shout out my mom, my dad, my little brother, and my best friend, Ella. Okay. I'd like to shout out my mom and my dad and my two sisters, Alexis and Karina. Great. I'd like to shout out my mom and dad. I'd like to shout out my mom and dad, my brothers, and uh, my best friend. So nobody here has any relatives in other cities or states. You guys are all, well, yeah, the Korea. The, you guys are all Tucson, Tucson kids? Yeah. yeah. So it's incredible. Wow. Okay, that's, that's rare usually on this show. So that's okay. I'm from California right here. All right. I'm from California. What part? <laughs> well, I was born in Travis. I'm a San Diegan. <laughs> so, did you guys have fun? Yes. What's your next goal? Stay calm. And then that, that, no pun intended. <laughs> Pretty clever. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> nice it's always fun here on 520 Sports Talk. Okay, so your next goal is winning state, right? Yes. Right? Yes. All right. Good deal. I want to thank you guys and continued success. Uh, let us know whether I'll give you some business cards. Send me a text saying, hey, we kicked so-and-so's butt eight to nothing or something like that, or we won a tough one, one to nothing, uh, that type of thing. Uh, have your coaches send us some pictures. We will put it on our Facebook page, which it will stay forever and ever. Now you guys want to get Facebook pages, don't you, huh? <laughs> I'm not putting it. I will put it on Instagram, okay? <laughs> All right. Once again, our social media outlets, Twitter, at 5 Sports Talk. Instagram, 5 Sports Sports Talk. YouTube, 5 Sports Sports Talk YouTube channel. And, of course, our flagship, Facebook, 5 Sports Sports Talk. Thank you very much, girls, for being on our show. I really appreciate you and the FC. Zero four black girls soccer team. Did I get that right? Yeah. All right, all right. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you very you. much. Just a quick program note before we sign off. Saturday, be at McHale Center. This is probably one of the most monu monumental dates, games ever in the history of women's sports. Not just basketball, but women's sports in general. The U of A is playing for the national championship against the other Wildcats from Northwestern University in the Chicago area of Illinois. So Saturday at noon, we want to see you there at McHale Center. I will be right at the half-court stripe on press row down the floor. If you happen to get a chance, come by and say hi. I'd love to talk to you and, uh, and definitely meet uh, some of the viewers out there that have made my show a really, really big success. And we really appreciate your, your, not only your viewership, but the sponsors that we have and everybody that follows us on 520 Sports Talk. So thanks again. Next week we've got CDL Boys Volleyball. These guys, man, they don't, they don't play around, man. They'll, they'll spike it right in your face. So you'll definitely want to check that out. We'll be right back here at Bianchi's uh, in Marana. Thank you, Bianchi's, for such a great time, great food. Really appreciate it. For Adam Sauber, our producer, Bill McCullough, 520 Sports Talk. Tucson Sports with a twist, and it's a wrap.